Today is January the 11th, 2013, and I'm going to document a uh, nice little instrument that I have recently received. It's called a uh, vector impedance analyzer for the uh, VHF and UHF amateur bands. Actually, quite interesting. Um, made in China. Um, pretty fascinating. Not terribly uh, charmed with the mechanics of it. I've already broken the connector up here and had to disassemble it and, and repair it. That's why I put this little pigtail out here because uh, there's a lot of strain and stress on this. But anyway, uh, it actually performs quite well. Uh, what I'm going to do, first of all, show you that it uh, that it does actually work and and give us the uh, the results that we expect. Let me hook up some things. Okay, the first thing attached, this is pretty boring, but we have to do this to, to make sure everything was working right. This is a, a nice 50 ohm load here that we have on it, and I'm scanning 100 to um, whatever it scans, darn, I don't remember, it scans the VHF uh, band for uh, amateur radio. And uh, the way that you scroll the frequency is by pressing and holding this. If you can see that uh, vertical line, scrolling across that's the frequency readout and there's its SWR reading which is exactly what we'd expect from a 50 ohm resistor so it's actually working right I'll put a uh, 25 ohm resistor on to show you okay now I have two 25 ohm resistors parallel which would give us 25 ohms which gives us an SWR 1.89 and this is you know nothing's perfect I accept that as two to one and we can scroll over here and and we can also go to say 400 megahertz and there is its SWR up there at that point and as we scroll the frequency right there it's 1.71 it says up there it says it's uh, 1.91 here we'll read all this so it actually seems to be working here for something way out of bounds is a 600 ohm resistor that I use for my audio termination it says this SWR is 12 to one, which is correct. So it would be 12 times 50, it would be 600 ohms. So that's actually working too. And we can change the scales here. I'm sorry about the glare. Um, if we change this to, say, 30, we'll see a line up there. There it is. Look at there. It even tells us that uh, our SWR does vary as frequency, which is what we'd expect. There we go. If we scroll this back down there. There it's only six there it's 16 to 1 at about 445 megahertz I like this thing it's, it's pretty interesting so let's keep moving on here okay now I have one of these little flat panel antennas I'll hold it in my hand here so you can see it one of these little flat panel antennas we'll, we'll scan it see what it's worth that's got kind of an interesting plot get the glare out of it that's at 100 megahertz. It's 14.95. But if I scroll over, if you can see that vertical line scrolling over to right there to that trough, it says it's down at about 1.6 at 134 megahertz. Whoops, passed it a little bit. At about 130 megahertz, it's 1.4. Pretty good up there. Has another high point way over here, at about right there or so. Yeah. At 151 megahertz, it's uh, SWR of about 5. If I go to 400 megahertz, and there's its, uh, there's a plot of it up there. Really kind of cool. And over there, it says up there at about 426 megahertz, it's about SWR of about 6. It's kind of neat, huh? This thing actually works. I'm really amazed with it. So let's put it on a real antenna. Okay, what we have now is a dual bander antenna. I realize my uh, lab setup is everything but uh, everything but correct, but we're just doing it as I've got it uh, stuck up to a piece of metal here on my my parts cabinets. This thing is uh, two and uh, two meter, uh, yeah, two meters, 144 megahertz type stuff, and uh, and 70 centimeters, 440 megahertz stuff. And uh, here we are, right there actually uh, pretty amazing 
it says that if we scroll this thing over to that trough, which is where the SWR is the lowest, which is about right there, it says our SWR at 153 megahertz is a 1.57. Not too bad. And then if we go to 400 megahertz range, then it's pretty flat up there. Pretty amazing. At 400 megahertz is what we're reading off right there. 400 megahertz. If we scroll over to its lowest point, kind of go up in frequency. You can see that scrolling over to about right there. Maybe about right uh, there. It's down about pretty close to one at 448 megahertz. Kind of cool, huh? For scanning antennas. Well, let's scan one on the outside that I have hooked up a. Uh, one of those that is, uh, it's a disc cone, uh, the next one I'm going to put on, and it's uh, supposedly from 25 megahertz to um, a gigahertz, we'll see. Okay, this is the disc cone antenna that's mounted outside, and um, looks like its SWR is actually rather high all the way across. There it is at 100 megahertz, right there, that's, that's 100,000 kilohertz. 8.44 down there. And then as we scroll this thing across, it gets a lot better, doesn't it? Oh yeah, th there's there's a great big peak if you see it over there on the left hand side of the screen. It's a very big peak at 100 megahertz. But over at uh, what is 135? Let's say about 144. Where where is amateur 146? It's two to one, two and a half to one. It would work. Let's go up to the 400 megahertz range. Let's see what we see up there. Well, see, it's all over the scale. All you can see is a bunch of dots. I have to change the scale on this thing. Right now, the scale is 3, I believe, 10. No, let's change it to 30. Wow. See, it's pretty bad up there. Sorry for the fumbling, but I need another hand. When you go up in frequency, so it says they're 412. Let's go to 440. Let's just do the amateur band type stuff. There's 440. It's 28. Well, it's practically an open circuit up there, isn't it? 30 to 508 to 1. No, I hope not. A little bit of bouncing around. Let's see if it'll settle down at 444 megahertz. It's pretty bad. You know, I think what affects these things is the uh, incoming signals. I think that that is a problem. I've been working on this thing earlier. Now, if we change the scale to, say, 100, there it goes. It kind of settles down there. But according to this thing, up there at uh, 440 megahertz, it's pretty bad. Let's go back down. So I see dots way up. I hope the hope the camera's showing you all that. This is not meant to be any kind of a reflection on the on the brand name or anything else. There's a little peak right there. Right there. Anyway, we could see it was quite stable over on this uh, dual bander. But that big disc cone up in the air gives us some pretty goofy results. Also, I'm going to make some videos. I won't do it right now to make so this one won't be so long. But I have found out if we use the old uh, bird um, line section and 5 watt elements. Got a 5 watt element here, 40, 400 to uh, a gigahertz. Here's the 100 to 250 for the 2 meter. This one is for the uh, 440 and uh, this one is 2. So I got the full range here from 100 to a gigahertz. And instead of hooking up the meter, this is a little digital readout, but instead of hooking up the meter, I hook up a uh, regular voltmeter and read uh, the millivolts out. I actually will determine the same things. I cannot determine SWR because the voltage coming out of here is actually not forward and reflected voltage per se. You cannot do the, uh, the sum divided by the difference of these voltages and get SWR, but you actually will get uh, uh, minimums troughs or whatever you want to call it at uh, resonant frequencies so you can actually use these things at uh, at very low levels because I'm driving it 
with uh, this old HP 85, 8656B, which is a maximum output of 17 dB, dBm, which is 50 milliwatts across uh, 50 ohms. So you can uh, operate at very low power, and with a vil and with a millivolt uh, meter across here instead of instead of the uh, watt meter readout. You can make and <clears throat> you will end up getting the same kind of results as you get off of this, although it doesn't have the graphical display, obviously. And um, you can make measurements with a, a signal generator. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You could use an old Heath kit or an ICO or a, whomever you got uh, as, a, as a really good ballpark and, and find out what your uh, SWR is at multiple frequencies without having to put a transmitter on it, without having to pollute the air with multiple watts of uh, hello, hello, testing one, two, three, four type of nonsense. And um, I'm going to document this and hopefully it'll uh, it'll help those that uh, have signal generators and, and some low power elements up in the VHF and UHF range. I have tried it a little bit in the HF, HF range and it doesn't work. I have not had positive results there, so this is just for the VHFers and the uh, HFers. Also, I have a couple of, uh, for the audio people that like my uh, YouTube videos, I do have a couple of really neat little beauties here that I'm going to be repairing. They, I just got them yesterday. Here's a little fender that has a, has a single 6K6 in it. Pretty interesting, huh? And then here's another little fender down here that I'll be working on. It has a pair of uh, six V6s in it. Actually, they've left a bunch of old tubes in it too. Look at there. A needle 5U4. It's got some uh, modern day six V6s, but uh, I believe the gentleman's gonna sell this one on eBay. He wants me to fix it up and I'll put him some uh, high-end uh, Jan six V6s in it and make it all USA original uh, vacuum tubes and what have you. Not much I can do for, for this kind of stuff, but I can uh, make it work again. All for fun. Love it. Hope you enjoy too. And last but not least, it seems like I always remember to do uh, one more thing after I've closed it off, is uh, <clears throat> here's a couple of HTs. One's a uh, a Wuxin and a uh, Baofeng. I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, I got the little HT antenna on it. And look at this. Up there, I got it on the 100 megahertz range. See the 100? That, that 100,000 kilohertz. And if I scroll up here to its lowest SWR, I actually get some kind of a reasonable SWR of 3.7 or so at 159 megahertz. Let's see what it is at about 146 or so. Well, not too good, is it? it says it's uh, sort of kind of reasonable, but 150. Now I did have to add this uh, gender changer on. So that is that has been added on. It'll have to be added on on the next one too. But that's for the two meter portion of this dual, dual bander. And if we go to 400 megahertz, that's what it looks like up there. It's pretty pretty high, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Let's scroll across it. There it is, about five. Let's see, go up to 440. Let's measure them all. There's some. There he is. It says it's about five to one. So there it is. Let's try the uh, other little uh, rubber duck or HT antenna. Okay, here's the other antenna. And uh, it looks like it's uh, dip right there. It's lowest SWR is about. Three and a half to one at 144 megahertz. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? And let's go to the 400 megahertz range. And there it is up there at 400 megahertz. Let's go up to 440. It's 
We're measuring everything at about the same point. So it's about four to one. Well, it's better than nothing. And it's not a dummy load. So there's a couple of little HT antennas that uh, could be evaluated uh, with this instrument. Well, like I say, with the addition of this, I don't know how much that would add. This is a pretty high quality stuff. I've got this from uh, reputable sources. It's not some of that junk. A lot of this stuff that comes out nowadays is just junk. Especially the BNC connectors. Anyway, there it is again.